Well, um, or in your email. Uh, this is classes that they're offering over on this side through the Keoka Paniava Farmers Association, the native uh, farmers over here in Paniava. And they, through DHHL, Department of Hawaiian Homelands, has granted their organization a bunch of money to teach and train their members uh, on an array of agricultural skills. The mic's not picking up much at all. Sorry. No, no thanks. How about now? Better? Yes, way more. Boop, boop, boop. Awesome. I had to turn it on. That helps. <laughs> so, um, the Keoka Pani of a Farmers Association, through the DHHL funds, has create, asked us to create a whole series of classes for them. I did some agriculture classes, I did a shortened version. Because some people try to focus their product on too general of a market, and, some, and you really need to pin it down to a certain set of customers. For example, um, coffee. How much does Kona coffee cost per pound? 25, 28 dollars a pound. You know of a coffee grower out in Kona um, who basically just had, was sick of playing the game. She, um, she wanted to promote her product to a different market because she was getting her coffee out to all the same buyers that are out there. Uh, the tourists that come, getting them out to the same shops just like everybody else and she wanted to find a niche market for her coffee. What she did was she wrote a business plan that basically outlined nothing more than increasing the price of her product to twenty or forty-nine dollars a pound, and then changing the, the label on the outside of the packaging. Same coffee she's been making for five years. You, you lost ten. The other way around is if you're going to get a new customer, you're going to probably have to look at ten different people before one person's going to buy. So it's going to be easier to keep that one customer that you have rather than try to go out and find 10 new ones. So anyway, that, it, it, there's a couple of other places that it works, but uh, that's the 10 to 1 rule. What's that product for? You want the appropriate quality for that. And which you know, may not be the highest price because of that, but it would be the appropriate price. Buyers or customers also typically want reliability, and by that we mean consistent quality. That means if I go today and it's ripe, I hope tomorrow it's ripe and sweet and the following day is ripe and sweet. Anybody here eat blueberries? Blueberries. You've been, you tried any of the blueberries recently in the store? Mm -hmm. The recent ones sucked. <laughs> it depends. It's one of the nice things about blueberries is when you find blueberries in the store, there's no blueberries to compare it against. Sure. Trust me, they suck. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, and, and it's one of the problems with the blueberry industry. Um, what they want to do nowadays is have blueberries available throughout the year. Okay. Some of the research we're doing with blueberries, we're able to do that in Hawaii. And we're able to do that with product that is consistently good because we got the right variety. Um, I, I can uh, I can say that thing about uh, not knowing what the other other um, ones taste like because I'm able to compare. I have, I have the basis of comparison. But for, you know, once we someone's able to bring blueberries on the market year round, or strawberries, or tomatoes, or whatever it is. Today or yesterday, I went into the supermarket. I'm lying because I'm not a tomato eater. Yesterday I went to the market and got a tomato. Was the ooh, ripest thing, you know, nice texture, flavorsome. <laughs> he doesn't like me. I don't, I'm not a sorry, I'm not a tomato. Quick, quick, uh, quick poll. How many people here love tomatoes? How many people here? Oh gosh. How many people here, well, I won't say hate, but not, not your favorite in the world? <laughs> Anybody in between? Oh, okay, so, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so there are some people in between. Seems like they're usually haters and lovers and not here in Hilo. The wholesaler shifted over to another wholesaler in Honolulu. The wholesaler in Honolulu then sends it off to the, to the restaurant or whatever. Or it could have been, you know, what? Could have um, 
being through the some some other route. But this, this is trying to trace, or this not trying to. This traces just about every possible path that uh, could happen. Now, what happens if going through this process and what I was saying, we have all these transactions. Each one should be adding value, buyers and selling, buyers and sellers gaining each time. What if in this particular case, when it was going there, these folks, uh, they're supposed to be adding value, but we don't really see what they're doing. They take our money, but we don't know what, what they're doing for us. What would happen in, if something like that were to? I don't get your question. We're, there's, there was a chain, there's a chain transaction going here, another transaction going here, another transaction, and they're selling to the <coughs> retailer. But if we take a step back and we take a look at it, these folks here, we're not really sure what, what they're doing for us. They but should be just They're just moving well, it. If they were, but if, if we're looking at it, and, no, they're not doing anything for us. They're, they're taking money, but, you know, it, assuming they're not distributing. They're distributing oh. some risk, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, so I'm saying if we look at it and they're not, we don't even see that happening. That's what they're supposed to be doing perhaps, but that's not happening. So you don't. They're not risk. doing anything for us. So you don't send it to them anymore. Exactly. We cut them out then. Get rid of them. So we go from there to there to there and then we go straight and we cut out that one. And what if we did the same thing and we saw, hey, this guy not doing anything either. We cut them off, so this goes straight. And what if this one's not doing anything either? We cut them off when we go straight to the retailer. What if the retailer really is not doing anything for us? So we can, we think we can do a straight to the customer. Then you go direct something like a farmer's market. So that is kind of the thinking that might be involved. You may not know it to get you to buy stuff. And the whole re kind of related to that. People are here, they're looking for stuff to do. Ag tourism is a um, way a lot of people have used. Okay, export markets. This side, I'm not sure why they broke it up this way, you know, in, in that particular groups. But this side is listing the export markets in descending order. So the biggest export market for a lot of Hawaii folks. U.S. West Coast, Western Canada, followed by Japan, followed by Middle Eastern U.S. and the rest of Canada, Asia Pacific Europe. This is changing because of all the direct flights now. Yes, they're trying to start up Korea and um, China, but at least otherwise, that's the segments people look at. Why are those segments there? ties to the visitors again. That's where the visitors come from. And strangely enough, that's where we ship most of our products. Mm -hmm. Combination of reasons. One has to do with this, the backhaul. Or you know, just because the airplane is already coming over, it's going to go back. Mm -hmm. And because they charge so much now for bags, a lot of times the cargo hold gets a little bit more empty. But the idea of backhaul, if you go into the supermarket, how much of the stuff there comes from Hawaii? Let me say 30%? Same, but I'm not sure. This person, Gene Kinsey, over at the University of Minnesota, a uh, person did some research looking at okay, why do people buy whatever it is that they buy. And this is what they kind of, you know, this kind of summarizes what I'm saying. So a lot of it just depends on income. When you don't have income, when you are poor and, you know, a human need is you gotta you gotta eat. Yeah. So when you don't have income you, or you cannot afford to buy food, all all you want in your homeless basically all you want is something in your stomach so that you at least feel free. We've heard stories about say North Korea. Folks in North Korea they're starving, the kids are starving. You wanna eat lunch is a cup of water where they're going to pick grass and bark and try to do whatever it is with it, just to get something in people's stomachs so at least you fool yourself into thinking you ate something. Typically though, at least when you get at least 
food stamps, hopefully, or you know, some like, some kind of income. I shouldn't say food stamps. Food stamp folks I've seen they live way better than this. But at, at the lowest level of of of, of uh, this pyramid, we're looking for food that is good, and nutritious, gives us our calories, gives us our vitamins, and all. We have some takers here. You go to Honolulu, you go to Waikiki, I guarantee you. Well, maybe they'll call the policeman on you, I don't know. But people are gonna look and say, wow, you know, I live in a concrete jungle. If I had a yard, maybe I'll, I'll buy your uh, lawnmower right here. But for most folks, like some place in the city, they're gonna look at this and say, why would I wanna buy that? Thousand dollars, no way. Okay, 500 for you, no, still takes hundred dollars. Well, I got a hundred dollars, but I cannot even fit this in my Toyota. <laughs> not gonna work. Why is that? Because it's the wrong form. That's not what people want to buy when they're looking for whatever it is you get on the front of these animals. Okay, what about this? If anyone doesn't know, this is a turkey. <laughs> Thanksgiving coming up soon. 25 bucks, you can have one of these. On the hoof. <laughs> On the hoof. Exactly like this. You catch them, you catch them yourself, $20. Uh -huh. Same kind of situation. I mean, yeah, now, okay, now we have some better, okay, I know what I'm going to do with this. It's going to be my, you know, Thanksgiving dinner. Honolulu, same thing. Ooh. <clears throat> Honolulu might be one of those places where, you know, when, when people ask, well, where does your food come from? Or the supermarket. <laughs> They, they, they look at this, oh, no. Mm, uh, They'll think they're at the zoo. Yeah, they might think they're at the zoo, you know, I don't eat exotic birds. Uh, uh, and even here, I see some of you, oh, no, no, no. Why is that? Somebody gamey that, tasting. Hmm? That would taste gamey. Oh, no, no, this one was fed of whole, whole grains. Organic grains, <laughs> organic grains. Massage, <laughs> Dave. Massage, beer on the side. Yeah. Um, Kobe <laughs> <laughs> you know, most folks are going to say, well, yeah.